This is the unit number 9. This is uh, related to the internal controls. Before I go in a deep discussion, just let me tell you about something. Audit controls, difference between internal control and the external control. Generally, those degrees which we say CPA, ACCA, they are meant for external audit because they have the official stem to audit something. Opposite to this, this is uh, when an external auditor comes in your company, he checks how the things are from his point of view. But sometimes, even most of the times, companies have their own internal audit departments which are working for them to protect the, the interest of the management to adhere the company policies, whatever policy management has decided, it is given to internal or control department, internal audit department, and when everyone has been informed about the policy, the, this department is monitoring. <clears throat> Just for an example, if you are working in a school, and management has made a policy that when you cannot receive the fee, without the say the uh, the approval of say finance manager right or you cannot receive money in cash you have to give a voucher to the uh, the parents and you have to guide them to go in that bank deposit the money into account and bring one receipt Maybe it has three copies, one copy for the bank, one copy for the school, one copy for the parents. How these three things came into being is because management want to ensure that the operations are ethically, honestly, fairly going on. No money that has been paid by the parents is being put in the, in the pocket of the employee and later it becomes an issue that parent is saying I have paid the fee and school has no record for that one, right? So that's why the internal control department is like a gatekeeper or a security guard for the whole organization. Now what is the major role of internal auditor is he will get a management, uh, you can say, policies, procedures, guidelines. guidelines from the management. And they will monitor through their documents. Suppose if we talk about trading companies, trading company every day they are making some sales, every day they are making some purchase. Now, if you have a strong internal control department, no purchase can be made without having PO authorized by say purchase manager. If it is an amount more than 30,000 dirhams or dollars, you need an additional approval of general manager purchase department. This is you have set some authorities to control that no one can make purchases without the approval of the management or the related departments. It may happen that you are, if, if there is no internal control in the company, you can go to somewhere, you buy something, you bring the receipt with you. And you show it to the accounts department that I need, I bought this one, give me some money. So at that time, might be someone can think, is this a required purchase or he purchased just for nothing. I mean, this is a question which can lead to a conflict between the departments. But if you want to purchase, the better way is to raise a purchase requisition. On this stage, every discussion will be done. That whether you need it, it's important or something. Once the requisition has been uh, made and approved, then a PO purchase order will be generated, right? Once a purchase order, a purchase order will be generated, it will send to the supplier for confirmation of the order. 
This can supplier after some times, you know, whatever the agreed delivery terms, they will send us a delivery note with the items. Based on this delivery notes, we will put our good receipt note, GRN that is called, or receipt invoice, shipment invoice, uh, any name you can give it. So once it will be with you, based on that, accounts payable department will generate a purchase voucher or purchase invoice. This will be a complete purchase cycle. Same way, uh, and you can see that so many documents are protecting the company from a fraud, from unauthorized purchase, for any anything which can cause confusion, conflict between the departments, between the management on the later stages. But if you follow this cycle, it will become uh, smooth uh, and it will become evident and people will believe that you are a sophisticated company because you, your documents are sophisticatedly placed. Same way, purchase, uh, same way we can, first of all, we should understand what internal control is for. Internal control is for the management, security, management wants that the people are given work and they are doing this work with the proper uh, diligence and dedication. How they can check? Suppose it's a big organization having 3,000 employees. You cannot check it in that way, one by one you go, no, it's not like that. They have to make the manuals, guidelines, policies and procedure which is self-explained to the employees. Now supposingly, uh, sales department, how they can make the sales? Suppose you sell uh, some product which is very costly and if your friend comes to you, you sell him a below price and some other customer comes, you charge more price. So later, after one month, two months, it comes to a point where people start feeling that there is no fixed price and when the finance department will analyze the profitability, they will see some goods are sold below cost, some are above cost, so it shows that there is no system in the organizations. That's why internal controls are being placed in the organizations to control the behavior of the people in order to avoid any miscommunication, any problem, any unseen conflict within the organization because not having the policies. Now, there are two kinds of auditors. One is external auditor, one is internal auditor. External auditor role is to come in the office and to express the opinion on the financial statements like balance sheet, income statement, trial balance and your vouchers. Internal control department is focusing on the efficiency, operations, policies and procedures. So their role is entirely different from the role of the external auditor. We being a CMAs, we should know the role of the external auditor but we should be focusing on internal controls because we need to help a management that how to make the, uh, the organization more healthy, more financially strong and more operation wise more stronger than before. That's why we will focus the, uh, today's lecture is for the internal control. Now, everywhere the internal control will be different. It's like every home is people are di differently living because they have their own mindset. Suppose in, if someone is living in Europe, their living style, their eating habits, their clothing, their schooling, everything is different. And people living here or in other countries, they have different habits. So you cannot make one policy for internal control and you can say okay this is the policy even if you are a big company based in US and you have offices in Qatar, Bahrain, Saudi, UAE you cannot give the blind policies from there okay this is what we are doing in US so you apply on maybe some policies will create a conflict 
within the organization for the employees. Suppose if female are working here in some bank and you give a dress code of, from USA, which is not acceptable for uh, her to wear. So again, it's cause, causing a conflict within the organizations. So internal control are purely based on the ownership of the company. We know, we know that we have to lock the door. No one can come inside. This is common. But how to open the door and what would be the reception method? Will you greet the newcomers? or you will not agree, this is internal management policies. Some organizations are human resource, they believe that human resource, the employees are valuable for the company. So what they do, they hire the people, they train them within the organizations and they send abroad also to get the higher education and once they come, they bring good knowledge, good experience for the company. So they invest in employees and the result come as a productivity for the whole organization. This is how they see. But some employer, they don't care. They say, what is this? Uh, why we should send our employees abroad? They should, we have a strong culture. Whatever we want, we will train them for ourselves. Yeah. So, based on our discussions, some people don't consider themselves more training oriented. They say, no, we will train them. No need to spend heavy amount on the trainings and development. This is, this is again a management attitude. So whatever is a management attitude, actions, they will make the internal control according to the situations. So the first thing to build up internal controls, you should keep in mind that internal control for every company will be different from the other because the employer mind is different from each other. It may happen that if one guy, any one owner has six, seven companies, so might be six, seven companies have same internal control structure. But again, it depends upon the size of the company. Suppose uh, you have a bank which has 10,000 employees. You have a trading company also. Same owner has a trading company which has 20 employees. Now for 20 employees, you don't need to make a strong internal control department which is very expensive to build. You need to hire an audit manager. Then you have to place the software and audit and so many things. So you have to see also the size of the company, whether this is required or not. 